Mr. Week Makers and welcome to my tutorial for making faux sugared eggs from Tim Holtz Distress Products and Tim Holtz Ideology Salvage Rabbits and Tiny Eggs. I have had so much fun making with these this season and the ideas have just, they just keep coming and keep coming. Right, Leona? And this was a, an idea that I had when they were first released and I was kind of coming up with some projects and ideas for making with them. But I kept putting this kind of on the back burner, setting it aside. I was a little intimidated by the technique of piping with Distress Opaque Texture Paste. I actually used a piping um, bag and tip and all of that to do it. And I was really afraid of that because I'm not a cake baker, decorator, cookie decorator, anything like that. And I didn't think I could do it. But you know what? As a complete novice, it, with that art, it was still easy enough I could do it. Uh, and I know that you can do it too. So I'm inviting you to come along and let's learn together how to make faux sugar eggs for Easter. Hello makers, these are the things that I gathered to make my sugared eggs project. I started out with paper mache eggs. I got mine at Hobby Lobby. I got three of them because I was planning on at least making two. They cost me $1.99 and they were back in the paper mache section where they have all kinds of different ornaments and boxes and all kinds of things. I thought these were craft paper mache all the way through, but actually, once I started cutting into them, I found out that they're not. They're plastic on the inside. So uh, you will kind of see some black around the edges here of this opening that I cut, and that's because the whole inside is black. And I'm telling you that because... I want to, of course, as you've seen, I want to eventually sugar this. So I want it to be very light and as if it's just lightly colored sugar um, through and through. And so I painted it with several coats of Distress Picket Fence paint on the inside and then also a couple of coats on the outside. It didn't take so many on the outside, but um, it did on the inside and it probably needs a, a, another coat at least. So how did I get the opening? Well, I just took an egg and a little pencil and I just kind of sketched an oval. Then I took one of my salvage rabbits and I just kind of laid it on there to kind of see, all right, when I have a rabbit in there, is it gonna show? Yes, so that's a big enough opening, that's fine. And then I cut into the egg. Now that takes a little bit of time because it's not flat. So when you're cutting, um, it's, it is gonna move also when you're cutting, you're using a sharp object. You want to be very careful with your fingers. Make sure you keep your fingers out of the way. And I used my craft knife for this. And as I was cutting, I always cut away from my hand and also away from my body. You don't want to put it against your body and cut toward yourself either. Um, so because you can also slice your hand, your arm, your body, something like that. So always uh, facing away and just take your time as you're kind of going through and then maybe as you're rotating and always cutting away from your fingers. All right. Now it does not have to be perfect when you're cutting it. This is not perfectly oval. It's okay. This will be covered up. I have two options for covering it up. One of them is that on one of the eggs, I wanted to try and use some of this fringe again, really kind of crum crunch it up so that it is thin and then just put it around the edge here and then maybe around this way. Uh, once it's already sugared and all of that, the other thing is, and I'm having trouble finding this. I know that you are crafters like me. And so I'm sure that you've done this. I bought all of this stuff way back when the salvage rabbits were released and tiny eggs were released. I think it was back in January, if I remember correctly. And Unfortunately, all the stuff I got for the second option for covering this edge up, I have misplaced. But I got frosting tips and, or I don't know what they're called, but the tips for doing frosting and the bag, the frosting bag. And I was going to put texture paste in it and then I was just going to pipe texture paste uh, around the edge like faux frosting and then also around this way where if you were actually making a sugared egg, they make them in two halves and then they attach them. And so that's why usually there's frosting that goes across this way and then across the opening. So I thought I would do that with texture paste. Hopefully 
uh, I can find them. If not, I'm going to have to buy them before I can finish this up. Now, most eggs are on some sort of base, and so I pulled out my vignette bases. These have been retired, but I have several sets because I do love them. I think this big one is just a little bit too big for the egg, but maybe once I get the fringe and things on it, it won't seem so big. Uh, this one seems a little small, but it might work. So I'm going to play around with those. Now for the inside, I'm going to add a foam ball, some of the tons of Easter grass that I bought when I was making my original things for this release. I still have a lot of that Easter grass left over. And then I have painted this Salvage Rabbit with two coats of Hickory Smoke Distress Paint. I'm going to put a thin coat of crackle paste all over it, and I really hope that it does an amazing job just crackling it, and that that hickory smoke just shows through the cracks to make it look like a really old cracked ceramic or cement uh, rabbit. And then I'm hoping to put it in here, and I hope that against the blue uh, sugar, faux sugar glitter, that it will show up nicely. And then I will probably add some tiny eggs, maybe some flowers, I don't know yet. My first thing is painting and glitter. So let's get painting and glittering. To quickly catch you up, I painted one of the eggs with tumbled glass distress paint. I cut a hole in the bottom of it, just the size of the top of the small vignette base. And then I went ahead and stuck that through the bottom and uh, attached it with E6000, and it is snugly on there. It dried overnight. This one I painted with sponge sugar and decided I would do something different, and so I put one of the little tartlet tins that I bought a long time ago off of eBay. I just attached it with E6000 on the bottom there, and so I got these off eBay, and it looks like someone had pre-drilled holes in a bunch of them to do to make like ornaments and things like that, and I guess if I wanted, I could put a salvage bunny in there and make a little ornament of sorts. But I chose this one, and that's the one I used for the bottom here. And I saw that on Pinterest when I was searching sugared eggs. And so there were people that had made actual sugared eggs and attached them to uh, tartlet tins. So I thought, oh, well, why not for my faux sugared eggs? So as you can see, I did go ahead and get the second one done. So I am ready to paint. I will probably paint the bottom of this the same color uh, or white just to make it not stand out so much. I will also do some sort of painting on this to make it not as dark. I did go ahead and put the opaque crackle paste, a thin layer of it on the hickory smoke salvage rabbit. And I do really love how it looks. I'm not sure I love how it goes with this. So I, now that I have it finished, I think I might use it for a different project that I'm working on. So yeah, but I love how once it dried that it just kind of cracked off and left some of that uh, dark gray underneath. Love, love, love it. And just look at all that crackly goodness on there. Fabulous. The next thing I need to do is glitter the eggs. In order to do that, I'm gonna color some Distress clear rock candy glitter. I have two cups. I have my alcohol inks. I'm going to do the sherbet and probably one drop or so of the mountain rose because sometimes this turns kind of a purpley pink and I don't want it too purpley, but just the tiniest amount because I want it very light. And then just a tiny amount of pool for the blue egg. And so I will put them in separate cups, stir them up, let them dry. And then...
As you can see, I have the eggs. They are completely glittered. The bases are colored. I may be doing a little something more like maybe adding foundry wax or something to the tart lit tin um, that's on the bottom of this one. It is glittered inside and outside. As you can tell, Leo absolutely loves it. And then this one has the tiny vignette base. It is also colored with the uh, uh, tumbled glass and glittered inside and out. I have put some uh, little foam half, I cut them in half, the foam balls. And I'm kind of looking in this one, it doesn't seem like, uh, it looks like they kind of broke apart or something. I'm not sure what happened uh, while I was at work. So I may go ahead and add a, a little bit more in there. Yeah, you think I should? Okay, I'll do it. And then this next step is that I want to add some things in the back. I pulled some items from the new Ideology palette ephemera pack. And so I pulled some of those things out here. A few of these items here are from the layers. So just these three, the, the florals and this one are from the layers. So they're a little bit thicker and they have a little bit of a shine to them. Whereas these are thinner cardstock and a flat surface. Uh, but I might use some of these. So as you can see here, I'll put this in here so that you can see if I use this, uh, I would, you know, trim it and that kind of thing. Um, but you just put it in the back there and then kind of build a scene around it. If I wanted to use something like that, I could use something like, you know, one of the cards from the ephemera, which I would probably have to trim down to get it to fit in there but I wanna show you what it would look like because I think it's really pretty. Whoops, see, I am gonna to have to re-glue those. Okay. So you can see kind of what it looks like with that in the background, which I think it's really nice. And what do you think? Do you like this one? I think that's pretty. It's got the blues, it's got purples. That's a really nice spring look. So I may trim some corners on that and try and fit that one in there. And then also, in order to go with this, I pulled over here, I have some uh, blue stamps, purple stamps from the palette of Femme Pack, kind of turquoise green. Uh, I got this ticket. So there are, you know, even a uh, little purple. So I pulled some things that I thought, well, I can build a background. Uh, once I get the background done, I'm gonna put the bunnies in front. I did two different bunnies for this. I'm gonna save this one that I made with the crackle texture paste that I thought I was gonna use. I'm gonna save that. So I have the chocolate bunny and the glitter bunny that I will probably use in these. I finished the blue egg. And so I'm going to put a picture in right now of the ephemera that's in the back so that you can see it without me having to move everything around. As you can see, it was one of the ephemera cards with the flowers on it. it had the green vase and the purple flowers. I had to trim off a little bit of the top and the script that was along the bottom. Then I added some stamps from the ephemera. I added the little circle special word and then a piece of that script that was along the bottom I went ahead and used a half a piece of that and then put some clipping stickers that says the flowers appear on the earth coated with sugar now that we're back and if you look inside I used some of the heirloom florals and I did cover them with sugar the bunny is covered with sugar well it's actually all really of course as we know rock candy distress and then I made a few purple eggs and I used some pink eggs to just kind of pull in all a bunch of different colors in there. And so the center is, or the inside is pretty much done. The grass is some of that grass that, uh, Leota loves it, is some of the grass that I uh, had earlier uh, in the year that I bought off Amazon. And this was kind of a bright green. I sprayed it with peeled paint and shabby shutters and then dried it with my heat gun to kind of bring the color down just a little bit, make it a little more closer to peeled paint. I was gonna use the purple and then I decided against it went with the green. Yeah, we love it. So this is how the inside looks. And then I will practice before I start putting the frosting on. Okay, so I may come back and show you that real quick. I also finished the inside of the pink egg 
and I used another one of the floral cards from the ephemera pack. There are several of them. I trimmed it down as well. And then I put the pink sticker, one of the teal stamps, the other purple stamp, another circle that says special. I used the other half of that little script that I cut off the bottom of the one I used in the back of the blue egg. And then I used a clipping sticker that said the sweetest of memories. And I haven't uh, put anything back in uh, to this one yet. So I'm going to go ahead and probably work on that. I think that the brown bunny is going to go in this one. So I'll get started and then we will finish up with either the fringe or the piping. I'm going to get ready to practice making the faux frosting. And so I have distress opaque texture paste. Now this is not opaque grit paste. This is just the plain smooth texture paste. You can tell I haven't used it yet. It's brand new. And so I saw this kind of a little hack on, I'm not sure if it was on Facebook or if it was a Instagram reel. And they said to put down just some saran wrap and then you take your frosting. In this case, our texture paste and you put it in the middle. I don't know how much I'm gonna need. So I guess it's better to do more than not enough. And then I can squeeze it back in. So I'm going to do most of this. Okay. Because I do need to practice. Yeah. All right. So you put your frosting, if you're making cupcakes or something like that, in there. Then you apparently roll it up like a, they said to roll it up like a burrito, which I didn't, actually a burrito you don't put in the center, but okay. And then you're supposed to do that a bunch of times and make it really skinny. <laughs> it's not working like on the, the video. Okay, anyway, that's how you get it. And then I think I did this right. So I put the this part in the sleeve and then I trimmed it off. And then I'm going to put this in and you have the little part here come out. Let's see. Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay. Kind of pull it down. And then you leave this nice and tight. And then I think you could put a clip or something on this end, maybe. Maybe I'll do that. I only have this right now. Okay. All right, and then you pull this out, trim it off. Okay, and then I'm just trying to see if it's gonna come out. Oh, it's coming out, okay. Then you put the tip on this, I think. I hope I'm doing this right. Please forgive me, all you cake decorators. Okay. This is not so easy to get on there. I probably did something wrong and that's why. Okay. All right, now let's see if it comes out. Oh, there it comes, look at that, okay. So I need something to practice on, I'll be back. I just grabbed a piece of scrap paper, so I think you go, let's see. I think you squeeze, squeeze, 
squeeze and pull. Whoops, I didn't pull very good on that one. Squeeze and pull. Squeeze and pull. Okay, that looks good enough to me. So that's all I'm gonna practice. I hope I don't mess this up completely. All right, I'm totally nervous. Here we go. Okay, where should I start? Squeeze and pull. So maybe at the bottom and go around. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, squeeze and pull. Squeeze and pull. Squeeze and pull. Squeeze and pull. Oh my. Squeeze and pull. Well, that's not too bad, right? So now I'm afraid to do it around the outside until this dries because I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up, but I have all this in here. <sighs> okay. All right. I'm going to hold it here and I'm just going to do it and just, oh, I hope I don't mess it up. Looks like Leota was on my desk. Maybe I should draw a line, right? Can I do it? I can do it. I can do it. Ugh. Oh, that's really bad. I screwed up. Okay. <laughs> I really messed this up. And I'm going to keep it because it totally makes me laugh. And it's going to be always a reminder that I should not question myself when I think I should do a little prep work before and not just wing it. So I started out and I should have come this way over the top. And I was worried because I was kind of getting messed up here. And I was focusing more on that. And I ended up <laughs> heading back behind the central area. Um, and then I kind of got back on track over here. So uh, I did mess that up a little bit. <clears throat> but if you look at it this way, it's not as bad. So anyway, I think that turned out much better than I was anticipating for not being uh, any kind of cake decorator or cupcake decorator. So I'm going to set this somewhere that I can't get to it and Leota can't get to it. And we're just going to let it dry uh, probably overnight. And then, yeah, then I'll videotape the, the finale. Okay, now I'm going to show you how the cleanup from this is supposed to be really easy. So I'm going to save my texture paste. So I'm going to just squeeze it back in here. <sighs> and then... So this is a little wasteful, I think, but I think it's worth it. It's worth it. At least texture paste isn't like, you know, millions of dollars or anything like that. So 
and I ended up with a whole lot left over, which is great. Okay, see if I can get any more out so I don't waste too much. Okay, it's pretty good. Put that back in there. And then you're supposed to be able to take this off and this that has your frosting in it. And then you open this up and where is it? You pull and look at that. There's just a little bit here that I have to clean off and that's totally clean. Hey, that hack works really great. All right, there you go. If you do frosting or if you do texture paste frosting, it's the clean wrap. That's the secret. I hope now that we've gone through how to make these faux sugar eggs that you will agree with me that they aren't as difficult as I know that I imagine them to be. So I hope they're not as difficult as you imagine them to be. I didn't show you my piping on the pink one or finishing up all the details on the pink one like I did with the blue. They were the exact same technique. The only difference is with the pink one, I did go ahead and I did mark that center area where if I had been making an actual sugared egg and I was putting the two halves together where the seam would have been. So, it, and as you can see on my first one where I just winged it, how I kind of went off uh, of the line and went backwards, you know, back towards the back where I should have stayed up in this area and gone over the center. Leota agrees, I really should have listened to myself and stayed on the seam line, which would have been here, okay? But like I said, I'm gonna keep this one for me because this is a good reminder that I do need to do some prep work and not just wing it all the time. Okay, so let's talk about some of the details that I really like. I think this little fluted uh, tartlet tin turned out so cute as a base. I went ahead and tied some of the velvet trims around it. On this one, I hot glue gunned because I used a bun. I looked at a bunch of different of the little fasteners and things like that, and none of them were working. They were just kind of pulling too much attention away from the actual egg. So I just used my glue gun and I stuck one of the little found tags and the heart charms in there with some glue gun on the velvet trims. I went ahead and put the velvet trim around here and secured it on the front. Then I tied a bow separately and just hot glue gun the bow on as a separate piece. I didn't try and tie it. And I did the same thing here because this one is so small and it was covering up that beautiful base. So I actually kind of pushed it in to the crevice there and again, secured it. And then I went ahead and stuck the bow on. Now, I really felt like this one because the bottom was so small that the bow was enough for this. So let's go ahead and, and look at a few of the details. I know you've seen this one already, but kind of looking in there, uh, if I can get the light in there. It, when you're in person, you can actually see this much better than you can when I'm trying to videotape it. So I'm sorry if it's very dark, but... You can see the sugared eggs. You can see the sugared flowers that goes with the, um, the flowers appear on the earth with sugar. And so um, I do have some sugared flowers in there. I have the sugared bunny and all those wonderful purple and blue and green parts of the palette ephemera that was just released for the ideology 2023 release. And, uh, that's pretty much it for this. It really was very simple. So I think it's really fun. And even with the, the mess ups that I did, and even with the piping where, see how this, these are all nice and thin and uniform. And then for some reason I started squeezing more out here so it's wider. Those are things that I see and probably an actual cake decorator would see. But for the most part, most people that are gonna be walking through aren't gonna notice that. And so really, it's okay if you, if this isn't your art either, the piping, 
just give it a shot. Have a lot of fun with it. Just enjoy it. And if you have a huge mess up, just accept it as just part of the fun and keep going. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this one since I didn't get to show you any of it during the, the tutorial. So I again have some sugared eggs. Uh, this one I went with green and a little bit darker pink because I used that pink tag that's in the back. And on this one, I went ahead and put a couple of thimbles with some sugared flowers on them. But I put an egg in the little chocolate bunny's hands and a few more eggs toward the back. And I did uh, add some yellow just to kind of pull that out. There's a little bit of yellow on the picture in the back. So I tried to just kind of pull from what was on the back panel as far as the eggs go. And that's really it. Used purple uh, Easter grass on this one and the green on this. And I think they go really well together. I'm really, really happy with them. And I'm glad that even though I was intimidated by the technique, that I went ahead and gave it a shot. And I, I love them even though they aren't perfect. I think they're just so, so much fun. And I'm happy to add them to my Easter decor this year. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. And also, I hope that it inspires you to go ahead and try that crafty thing that you've been putting off because you thought you couldn't do it. I know you can. So I hope that you give it a try. And I hope you let me know if you do and tag me so that I can see what you made. Even if it's not anything to do with this tutorial, I would love to see what thing you found that you've been putting off that you thought was outside of your creative zone and that you gave a try. All right. I'd love to see it. Now, if you have any questions about this project, please contact me through my blog in the comments, or you can comment here uh, in the comments. I have turned the comments back on. This is just a little trial thing to see if I can keep up with the comments here and every, every place else, along with um, my job. As you know, this is just a hobby for me, and I do it in my spare time. So hopefully I can keep up with everything. If not, and if I have to turn the comments off again, you'll know why. Um, I, I just probably wasn't able to keep up with it, but I'll let you know. So as of now, you're able to comment on this video. And if you want to know what I used, the links are in the comments for this video. And they are also on my blog for ease in shopping. And so that you know, even some of the colors that I use for alcohol inks and all that stuff. All right. Thank you so, so much for stopping by. And I hope that you have a very creative day. Mm -hmm.